Your brain can burn two different fuel sources. It can burn glucose, which it does most of the time, and it can burn ketones as a fuel source. Now, one is not necessarily better than the other when it comes down to what your brain needs, because your brain always needs glucose. But there are some reasons to believe that utilizing ketones as a fuel source could help lower the risk of Alzheimer's and dementia, but also help improve cognitive function for those that do already have neurodegenerative diseases. This is going to be a sciencey video. So hold on to your hats, because here we go. Hey, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you can get new videos every Tuesday, every Friday, Friday and every Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And also turn on that little bell so you can get notifications whenever I do live broadcasts to answer your questions. So first off, let's talk about what happens to the brain on a ketogenic diet, or at least when you're fasting and using ketones for fuel. Because believe it or not, when you are fasting, the byproduct is ketones, and that provides an energy source for your brain. In fact, that was the original foundation of ketosis in the first place, was utilizing fasting to create ketones to prevent and treat epilepsy. So what that means is you're able to reduce the actual impact on the brain. We're not having as much glucose hitting the brain, so the brain isn't as stimulated, but it still gets energy in a very effective way. Now, if we can utilize that same kind of thought process and apply it towards Alzheimer's and dementia and neurodegenerative diseases, we can put ourselves in a pretty cool spot for helping out those that are dealing with these kind of diseases. Now, when we look at Alzheimer's and dementia in the first place, usually it's an impairment of the brain's ability to utilize glucose in the first place. So what ends up happening is because the brain can't use glucose as much, the brain cells start to shrivel up and die. They're basically starving. So if we can condition the brain to utilize fats and ketones as a fuel source a little bit better, we're not going to fall victim to that glucose starvation in the first place. But let's talk about three things that make the brain a little bit more effective on a ketogenic diet and why it may help out with preventing Alzheimer's and dementia. The first off is mitochondria. Okay, we have mitochondria in every cell within our body. That's how we create energy. That's how we create adenosine triphosphate. But we also have this ATP machine, this mitochondria, in our brains. And the cool thing is, is beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is the main ketone body, provides a lot of energy. In fact, it allows more energy per unit of oxygen than glucose does. And this beta-hydroxybutyrate, this ketone, is utilized and turned into energy in the mitochondria. So since we have mitochondria in the brain, and since we have beta-hydroxybutyrate when we're on ketosis, then we create more energy without negative byproducts. Therefore, a cleaner burning, natural gas burning machine, unlike a nasty diesel engine blowing smoke everywhere. Okay, that leads me into the next thing, which is the ketogenic diet's effect on reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen species is a natural process, okay? Any kind of metabolism is going to have a byproduct of oxygen. This byproduct of reactive oxygen, it floats around throughout the brain and it causes all kinds of chaos. It reacts with things. That's why it's called reactive oxygen species. Now, here's the cool thing. If we can control that, we can reduce the risk of brain cells dying and shriveling up and going away and ultimately leading to neurodegenerative diseases. Now, the ketogenic diet has been proven to reduce reactive oxygen species because it allows the brain to burn energy in a cleaner way, thereby not having this toxic oxygen that flows around and kills the brain cells, leading to Alzheimer's and dementia. But that leads me into even the next thing, GABA and glutamate. Okay, so GABA stands for gamma amino butyric acid, and glutamate stands for, well, glutamate. The glutamate system of the brain is what causes us to feel anxious and have energy. It's an excitatory thing, and our bodies and brains are always trying to find this balance of GABA and glutamate. And ideally, we should be skewed slightly towards the GABA route, so we're a little bit more relaxed. But some people are skewed more towards the glutamate route. But now, neuroscience is starting to show that we can dictate a little bit more within our own control what scale we're on. You see, if we're in the glutamate cycle, we're using a lot more energy, and we're cramming this energy into the brain, just naturally, even if you don't feel it. This wears out your brain cells. It wears out the neurons. It wears out the communication. and makes it so your brain fatigues faster because you're borrowing from tomorrow for today. This means you would ultimately end up with a neurodegenerative disease much easier. Now, if you're skewed towards the GABA side of things, you're a little bit more relaxed. Okay? You're not borrowing from tomorrow for today. Your brain is on a nice, even pace, yet still producing energy just as effectively, just not going totally haywire at the same time. Now, there's a study that was published in a journal called Trends of Neuroscience, and they found that literally the presence of ketones made it so that the brain could not load up on glutamate. What does this mean? It means that when ketones were present, the brain cells weren't accepting glutamate. 
So they were unable to get that super excited, excited over the top feeling that they would have with glutamate. Therefore, making it lean slightly to the GABA scale where we should be. Calm, cool, collected, relaxed, with a nice steady flow of energy that is clean, clear, crisp, just like Visine, right? But now there's a study that was published in 2018 that really makes some sense of this stuff. And it's specifically related to those that already have Alzheimer's and dementia. Now this study was published in the journal Alzheimer's and Dementia, Translational Research and Clinical Investigation. Okay, and what it did is it took a look at 15 participants. Okay, these 15 participants had mild to moderate Alzheimer's already. And what they did is they put them on a ketogenic diet for a few months. And they measured their cognitive skills with a test at the beginning, at three months and at four months. Now, I will say, full disclaimer, at the end of the four months, there were only 10 participants left. Five of them had to drop out for medical reasons that were not associated with the ketogenic diet, but were more so associated with their caregiver's assessments. So anyway, with 10 participants that finished the study, nine out of 10 of them had massive improvement in their cognitive awareness and their cognitive skills, as deemed by a very reputable test known as the ADAS-COG test. This ADAS COG test measures over 70 different skills. So it takes a look at your spatial awareness, it takes a look at memory, it takes a look at your task attentiveness, your ability to complete a task, a multitude of other things. And they found that those that were on the ketogenic diet for three to four months had a five point increase on this test, which is a significant increase. Now, here's where it gets crazy. When they stopped the ketogenic diet, their test scores went back to where they were before showing that while they were on the ketogenic diet, they were able to activate the portion of their brain and activate the brain cells they weren't able to activate before to improve their memory and ultimately overcome some of the hurdles that are associated with these neurodegenerative diseases. Now, this isn't the end-all be-all. This doesn't prove that the ketogenic diet is healing or curing Alzheimer's and dementia, but it means that we're finding alternative energy sources that don't utilize the same pathway that leads to the detriment and the ultimate deterioration of our precious brain cells in the first place. So as always, if you like the science, and if you want more videos like this, put them down in the comment section below. I love this neuroscience stuff, and I love talking about the brain. So as always, keep it locked in here in my videos, and I'll see you in the next one.